Beach FM, locals talking to locals. Beach FM, lovely to welcome in Sue Triggs now for a couple of reasons. Firstly, we all know that I, I have a special fondness for the Cancer Society. Many of us have personal reasons to thank the Cancer Society, and I'm one of those. But also, I love, I love an historical novel. And I'm now going to welcome to the program Sue Triggs, or Sue, should I call you Rose Pascoe? Oh, call me what you like. Sue is fine. Um, <laughs> I answer to both these days. Well, I bet you do because uh, that, that is your pseudonym in terms of uh, the, the, the various books that you have written. That's right, yes. So it's um, kind of fun to have a second name. It is, isn't it? Yes. Is there any particular reason behind the name? Uh, yes, well, the historical novels are sort of based on some of my ancestors. Ah. So um, I've chosen the rose from my mother's family and the pasco with the Cornish element from my oh. father's family. So it's, yeah. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Now, would one of those books that you refer to your family's history be The Widow's Secret? That's right. I mean, it's not a story about my family as such, but, you know, that was the sort of the spark for the idea. The, um, you know, people from your family that came over you know, in my case, the 1860s and 1870s, you know, what an amazing journey they had. And um, I just thought, what a, you know, great idea for a novel. And you've obviously put an enormous amount of work into it. I'm just looking at your website, rosepasco.com, and um, I just clicked on sailing ships, and there is the history, really. There is just, I imagine, some of the research you put into this most recent book. Well, it is. I mean, there's a lot of diaries out there of people who came over, largely from the cabin class of people, and um, I mean they're a fascinating read. It's not, um, it doesn't seem like work at all. It seemed like a lot of fun, <laughs> um, and the stories are incredible. I mean, you know, these people were on on board for three or four months at a mm. time. Mm. Um, you know, they went through storms. They went through, you know, you know, human uh, interaction issues and, yes, and all sorts. Of so yeah, I mean, it's you know, the story practically right. But. Do you think they did it because they were very brave, or were they desperate with things so bad back home? Well, both, I think. For the, um, I mean, my family were all the, you know, the steerage class immigrants, mm. and um, it, it's all linked up with the, you know, the industrial revolution and whatnot. Um, you know, people being thrown off the land because the the, the landlords were uh, enclosing the areas that you know, traditionally been Sell farmed and, and tended by, you know, the labouring class. Yes. Um, they didn't need them anymore because of mechanisation. And same in the city, you know, the factories, the, um, you know, the piece workers who were doing bits of sewing and so forth. You know, it was all going into machine looms mm. and whatnot. So yeah. yeah. That is an echo of what's happening at the moment with all the, the computers taking over and all the automation with many, particularly of the manual jobs, just disappearing. Yeah, history always repeats, as they say. So, they say. Yeah, but, so yes, I think you're right. You know, a lot of the people, you know, was pretty much desperation. I mean, people were starving. I mean, this, is, this is Dickens' London, really. I mean, yes. it was, um, you know, pretty tough times for the people who were poor. He was a pretty good um, historian, wasn't he? That Charles Dickens, the history of his day. He certainly, yes. he certainly, um, I think, spread the word very well. I have to ask you about Alfred Fell because you make reference to him and his diary. Did you feel as if you got to know Alfred Fell in reading that diary? Um, I felt a certain kinship with him because he he's um, he was quite a scientific observer and. Um, a lot of the diaries are quite, you know, they're quite sort of personal. So they, you know, sure. would talk about food or, you know, some tips they had with somebody. Whereas he was a great observer of um, what was going on in, you know, the wildlife. Um, he kept notes of, you know, what the ship was like. So, you know, there's diagrams of the ship and so forth. So, you know, from my perspective, it was a fantastic diary to understand how the, how the ship operated as well as, you know, what was happening on board. So, um, yeah, it was, you know, it was very interesting. I mean, I, it was a great resource. Excellent. So the, the Widow's Secret came out of this, and this is not your first book, is it? 
Well, it, well, technically it is because um, I wrote it first, but oh, then I decided. I then I decided. Well, I need to have. Um, when you sell e-books, it's good to have one that's free, yes. so that people can get an idea. Because no one knows who I am. I'm, I'm just a new author. So I decided to write a novella, which was a prequel to the uh, Widow's Secret. Um, but it actually was written second. Oh, I see. So the daughter's promise came before the widow's secret, did it? It came after, but it's a prequel. I see what you mean. Yes. Okay. I mean, uh, it, writing wise, confused. it came after. Yeah. I'm just yeah. acting as <laughs> I'm confused now. <laughs> I, I, I get it. And when you say um, you, you're just an author, you're an author from Romati Beach. And That's right. This is a rather nice way to, to earn your living, uh, living in, in a beautiful and blessed part of the world such as Romati, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't say earning a living exactly. I'm just, it's not J.K. Rowling yet, but um, I think it's pretty well known that you know authors don't make a lot of money, but it's a lot of fun doing, and I figure you know it's a fun hobby if nothing else. And, well, it's a jolly good excuse to walk on the beach. Absolutely, yes, I'm doing research, of course. Uh, and, and you'll be making even less money over the next period because I believe you're donating some of your funds to the aforementioned Cancer Society. That's right. I mean, all the profits from the book for the next month up until 14th September is going to Cancer Society, yep. And why did you do that? Oh, well, like you, I've been through the um, the cancer thing and I uh, wanted just to give something back and it just mm. seemed like this was a way, you know, I could, that was a bit unusual, a bit, a bit novel and um, um, why not, essentially? So, um, Absolutely, yeah, I mean, why not? You know, as the Cancer Society does great stuff and oh. it's not until you need their services that you realise really what a lot of things they do, um, you know, the support that they give, the, um, you know, the transport into town to the hospital appointments, the, um, the information that they give. And it's just, um, you know, it's a fantastic service. So, uh, you know, when you need it, you know, you really, <laughs> you really value it. No doubt about that. Yes, they are a magnificent, magnificent part of our community. Rose, how, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> am no, I allowed to call not. you Rose? Am I allowed yes, to call yes, you Rose? Yes, <laughs> I, Rose, I um, <laughs> um, Rose, the pseudonym. How do people find your books? You mean physically find? Yes. Them? I mean, how do they? How do they access it? How do they uh, download them or whatever they do these days? Oh, well, for anyone who's got uh, an e-book, so you can either have an e-book reader or read them on a tablet or computer or whatever, you just need to go to the whatever distributor you use, so it might be Kobo, Amazon, you know, Kindle, um, Apple Books, iBooks, um, and a number of others. But those, those would be the main ones in New Zealand. Um, and then, you know, buy them if you right. buy any other books that you, that you, you know, would would buy through Kobo or, or and or well you can you can go through my website and it's got all the links there. Excellent. Rosepasco.com. That's me, yes. That's you. Well that's you occasionally sometimes you sue Triggs as well. Uh, and yes. Sue, it's been lovely talking to you. Thank you so much on behalf of the community for this and just you you're making with the widow's secret and, and the profits going to the Cancer Society. And it's been really lovely getting to know you. Congratulations on what you've achieved. Can't wait for what's next. Oh, thanks very much. One oh six point three BGFM.